far as the, the term progressive, when I was growing up, it was uh, very different back then what it is today. And uh, the one thing that remained the same about it is that it's kind of, you get to do whatever you want musically. And uh, it has to have certain aspects to it that could define it as progressive. But I think it's a really cool term for bands who don't want to be pigeonholed into one style of music. You know, if you listen to the older prog bands, you're getting a lot of influences like jazz and classical, and you're getting these really long, elaborate arrangements. And now it seems to be more of a, a metal-oriented thing rather than kind of like an all-inclusive thing. And I think that's cool too. I just think that's just where the generation is going is a more uh, harder, heavier aspect of the progressive side of things. I feel like if you're in a rock band, metal band, there's sort of things that you might run into where it would be like, oh, we can't do that, it's not metal enough, or that's, you know, it's not rock enough. Um, and I, I've always liked that the bands that seem to be progressive don't ever really fall into that. They'll have this like weird out there section, and that's totally fine. Uh, it's probably the most free of the genre, or maybe it's like an anti-genre, I don't know. But it's something that that basically just gives you the license to do whatever you want. I think uh, what's, what's kind of funny about the, the way that we interpret it is when we're demoing, a lot of times the sections that receive the most fanfare from the band is the section, are the sections that have like these really uh, uh, emotive or even sometimes cartoony keyboard sections. It feels good to be able to like put that kind of stuff in a song that is uh, generally serious or heavy or whatever it is. It kind of lightens the mood and kind of shows all sides of our creative personality. We're not trying to write a new style of music. I think that's kind of a pointless endeavor. And it's completely subjective, so you'll never really reach that goal. A realistic goal is to make something that you're proud of. And that's very, very attainable. So. It needs to be a fun process. Second, that starts to feel like work or homework or like, you know, something. It's, not worth, it's going to be worth the time. Like, We're very careful about monitoring like our individual happiness with the things that we're doing. And that's not to say that everything's always perfect, but it's just, I think the main goal is just to end up with a body of work that we can all look back on and be like, yeah, like that's something that I'm glad that we stand behind. And we stand behind it for reasons that are meaningful to us, because we wanted to write that. That's what we were in the mood for at this point in time. And not for arbitrary things like, oh, you know, we're trying to change the shape of music, whatever that means. The album format's so arbitrary if you think about it. It's, it, you know, it came down to just limitations of space on, on an LP per side and then cassette tapes per side, and then you know the 74 minutes that you had on a, on a CD. So those are all very sort of arbitrary limitations that determined the average length of the album and like what people's attention spans were. But that was also a different time. That's when like, I remember we we'd grown up and we'd buy an album, like look at the artwork and listen to it the whole way through. And now it's a different generation. If people want to digest one song at a time as well, like hopefully the songs stand out on their own. Like, as I've lived more in this modern industry, I'm starting to become more of like a one song at, at a yeah. time guy too, you know? And like, I've done less and less of the album listen through. So I, I understand the other side. It's also like consumption too. You have the internet constantly blasting content at you. Yeah. It's like your attention span can only stand so much. And then you have streaming services that just yeah. give it to you right away and it's just like... There's so much. It's just so much Like, now, like yeah. back then you'd listen to that whole album because like you bought it and that was like this new album that you just had and that you had enough allowance to get and like your other albums you listen to a bunch, this is this new thing and like it's that or like the radio so like you go and listen to this but now you have the world at your fingertips. You can listen to anything whenever at all time. So I think that changes the context of the consumption of music. What's up, freaks? That was Periphery. Down below, we have a link where you can buy their latest double album, Juggernaut. Be sure and tune in next week for our mid-season finale with none other than Stephen Wilson. It's gonna be awesome. Before we return to Into the Machine in a couple of weeks, we have something very special planned for you. Stay tuned, freaks. <laughs>